Thanks for joining me. This is Danny and welcome back to my modded 1.11.2 series. Today we're going to be playing with RF tools and I've already made the RF tools manual. The main thing that I want to do with RF tools today is to create a quarry using the builder block and uh, we're also going to get into the storage system and the power storage system which we're going to set up to allow remote powering of our quarry which we're going to be setting up in the deep dark. If we do have time we're going to get into the spawning system as well. And what's going to be really great about using the RF tools builder block as a quarry is that we won't even have to go down into the cavern. We can stay up on the top in the stone area of the deep dark and not even have to go down in the, into the cavern. Um, but we are going to need a fair amount of resources to get this going. So to do to make a quarry out of the RF tools builder, obviously first of all we have to make the builder block which is this. Um, we're going to need an ender pearl. I don't even have one ender pearl. We used all our ender pearls in the last episode with Batania. And then we're also going to need a shape card. So there's several shape cards. Now this builder block can do lots and lots of things. In fact, if we look in the manual under builder, we will see that we can move structures, which is really awesome. You can move structures from one place to another. We can rebuild a structure from one spot to another. So we can basically tear it down in one place go to the other place, rebuild it. We can swap structures between two spots. All three of these things are kind of the same functionality, but um, in slightly different ways. We can build geometric shapes, circles, toruses, domes, things like that. We can clear out areas, and we can also quarry an area into certain shapes. And we can also soak touch fortune. We're not gonna do that, but uh, soak touch your fortune. We're just gonna, we're just gonna do a regular old quarry um, because that's what we can afford right now. We can collect XP items, we can pump liquids, we can do all kinds of stuff. Um, but we're going to be quarrying, and these are all the different shape cards that we can do, and we are going to want just the plain old quarry shape card. Actually, we're going to, going to want the... Hmm. Now, usually I do the clearing quarry, and that's basically just the regular quarry with glass surrounding it, and that gives us a hole in the world instead of dirt, but because we're doing it in the deep dark, we might even be able to get away with just doing a regular quarry, and um, that way we won't have a big hole that we can fall in. Um, because we'll easily be able to see where we've already quarried because it'll be dirt. So we might even just do that. Um, but this is what we're going to need. We're going to need four diamonds. So it's not terribly expensive. And then some brick and blah, blah, blah. So so this is actually a fairly inexpensive quarry considering how powerful it is. Um, however, it is going to need a fair bit of RF. It'll take as much RF as we give it just about. There's a limit. I don't remember what it is, but, but it's pretty high. I mean, this thing, if you give it the maximum amount of RF, it's going to quarry really, really quickly. Now, what I usually do early game is I is I'll just have like a separate power system there, but we've got a really nice power system here with our canola. And we're not using it for much yet. There's not much that we're using RF for other than charging stuff, like charging our drill from actually additions and charging our not enough wands wands. <laughs> and uh, that's it. So we may as well just pump this water, this power over there, which we can do very easily, again, with RF tools using the um, power cells, which are a little bit expensive, um, but not terrible. We can get prismarine um, from the atomic reconstructor, so that's not a, that's not going to be too hard to do. Um, emeralds, that's going to be a little harder for us to come by. We don't really have a good source of emeralds right now, but we've got a few to get us started, so that's not going to be too bad. Yeah, we've got four of them. We're going to need two because what we're going to do is we're going to set up two power cards or two power cells, and one here and one in the quarry, and we're going to link them using the power cell link cards, or the power cell cards, which is just this. So it's actually pretty cheap. <laughs> nice! So let's get started with the... <coughs> excuse me. I guess let's do that first, because we're not even going to be able to power this quarry until we have a way to get power out there. And then plus, we can start um, building up our power reserves. So we're going to need a lot of redstone here, obviously. We're going to need eight blocks of redstone. So let's just... Let's just do that. Quartz in order to make I guess this is the other thing we're using power for but not very much and very intermittently oh wait wait we need four of those and then we're going to need the, to make the machine frames now machine frames as we're getting into RF tools we're going to be making a lot of these so in fact I want to make another work table from forestry just so that we have an easy way to kind of save recipes that we're going to be doing a lot of so machine frames, we're going to be making a lot of these. So wait, let's grab... Oh, wow. Okay, we may need to go mining for a little bit more lapis. Maybe not, actually. Our quarry might bring in enough lapis for us. 
We're going to want some di some gold. We may as well just turn those into nuggets right away because we're going to be using a lot of gold nuggets this this mod. I mean, it's it's only two gold nuggets, but there's so many things that take a couple gold nuggets here, a couple gold nuggets there that <clears throat> that you'll find when you're working a lot with actually or with, with RF tools. You're going to be using a lot of gold nuggets. Okay, so there's our machine frame. I'm going to right click to lock that recipe so that whenever we want to make a machine frame, we could just click there. And I'm going to put that in there. Put this stuff in there and we'll probably be making a lot of power cells over time as well so we'll lock that one. Oh, another machine frame of course all right so we've got our two power cell two power cells and now we're gonna make the link cards again <laughs> more gold nuggets some redstone and some paper I'll just throw all the paper in there we're going to need two of those. So this is probably one of the cheapest ways to remotely power things. Now these power cells will either input or output on each side. So you can't in and out on the same sides, but you can specify you know different operations for different sides. So I'm just gonna put it down there, store all the power. And we're going to say input. Now that button automatically sets all sides to input, but we can take a wrench um, our smart wrench, we should probably make one because we're going to need it for lots of things. In fact, let's go over here again. And that is just two lapis and, and an iron. And we don't need to save that recipe because we're not going to have to make another one of these. But if you right click on each side, you can toggle it between. And if you look in the tooltip or in Wayla, it says side output, nothing, input, output, nothing. Okay. So this side is input, so right now you can see this thing is filling up with power. Our uh, farm is running again. We're going to take both of these link cards and we're going to link them in here. Um, oh wait, we're going to take one link card and put it there. And then we're going to put the other one here. And now those two cards are linked. Um, why is it saying unlinked? Okay, yeah, they both now have a link ID of one. So this thing's filling up with power. Now if we set this power cell anywhere, anywhere, <laughs> like anywhere in the world, boom, we set it down. And we link it, or we put that link card in there. These two power cells are now linked. And as you can see, it's there's a total of, normally, these power cells hold 1 million RF, as you can see by the by Wayla. Um, and they have a maximum input-output of 5,000 RF per tick on each side. When we put this link card in, we can see that it's now telling us that, oh, we have 2 million. We have 2 million RF. In total. That's because we have 1 million being stored in here and 1 million being stored in there, and they are unlinked. So I'm going to turn that off, and then we're going to pick this up, and it's going to retain the link card inside. So you can pick up pretty much any RF Tools blocks, and it will retain the information. Um, let's see, what are we? We're only producing 80 RF, or well, CF, whatever, um, Forge Energy per tick, which is compatible with RF from RF Tools and CF from. Uh, crystal flux from actually additions it's all the same it's all forge energy um, I am actually going to place this in the world so that these both get filled up for now and it doesn't matter I mean we, this is basically a multi-block structure but it's separate from it you know we can place them anywhere so it's a free-formed multi-block structure I'll throw some bricks in there so there's our shape card that's just a generic shape card you can actually also use these in the shield projector in addition to, which we're not going to get into today. But And then here's our quarry now. We're going to need a diamond pick and a diamond shovel. So four diamonds. It's totally worth it because we're definitely going to be getting diamonds <laughs> out of the deal. Hooray! Uh, okay, so in the meantime, I'm going to think about whether or not I want to make this a clearing card or not. And now all we really need is that ender pearl. As long as we're going Enderman hunting, let's make a syringe, because this is what we're going to need in order to spawn. In fact, actually, let's make two of them in case we decide to grab another animal. So we've got to hit this guy until the syringe is full. Not this guy. <laughs> this guy we just need to kill. Uh, but this guy... Crap. Crap. But t it takes a while. <laughs> and it doesn't do any damage, hardly, so... All right, you get away, spider. Ah, crap. All right, let's run over here. Get out of that. Get away from that spider. 
Oh, crap. Okay, I think it's full now. So now we can kill him. Hopefully. <laughs> Whoa, 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 leg! Oh, jeez. Okay, we just got our ender pearl that we needed. Yay! But, you know, <laughs> there's another enderman. Yeah, I hear you. Uh, we may as well kill it. Let's just make sure. Yep, essence level 100%. Nice. <laughs> oh my god, look at all the endermen! Yay! Don't you pick that up! <laughs> Wait, yeah. Yay! Okay. Uh, we need a place to cheese these Endermen. How's this? I know that they can break blocks now above you, which, because of Quark. <laughs> They don't teleport you away like they used to, but they can still break the blocks above you no matter what they are. Oh crap, see? Oh no, that was something else. Never mind. Ah, come on zombies, I got Enderman to go with here. Whoa, whoa! Okay, that worked. <laughs> wow, they're all dropping in. Well, not all of them. Ooh, an Ender Mini. Ooh, I might want to syringe this guy. Yeah. Yeah, if we can get an Ender Mini in our syringe, that would be great. Ah, uh, come on, you guys. An unsuspecting Ender Mini. Now, Ender Minis won't get mad at you. Until you hit them, like you can look at them. Hello, I'm looking at you. Oh, there's another one. Oh my god. Okay. But these guys are pretty tough. Let me eat first. And I'm gonna have to hit it a whole bunch of times. Oh, oh, they gang up on you. Oh my god, I didn't, I didn't know that. Nice. <laughs> I mean, sort of. Sort of nice and sort of not so nice. Is it full? It's not full yet. Oh, cr no, no, creeper. Okay, we got it, we got it, we got it. Whoa, oh no, I'm in a hole. Oh my god, oh my god. Ugh, crap. Well, I didn't get anything out of that, but we did get a syringe. Yay. Whew, that was stressful. <laughs> I forgot that I had double jump. I could have easily gotten out of that. The builder block now. We've got everything we need. Hooray. So there's our builder block. Here is our shape card. I've decided I am going to do the shape card, the clearing shape card. For now. We can always change it back if we later want to decide. You can just surround the clearing quarry with dirt. We're ready to make our deep dark portal. This is just a bunch of compressed cobblestone. It's pretty cheap. <laughs> Each compressed cobblestone is just a nine... A 3x3 three three of cobblestone, basically, and the portal, let's just put it down, oops, <laughs> let's put it down here with our nether portal. Uh, put it right there. We just stand here for a really, really long time, and eventually we'll get teleported to the deep dark. Hooray! You don't want to stand on that portal too long, or it'll take you back to the overworld. The Deep Dark is a cavern dimension from the Extra Utilities mod, as you can see by when we hover over this. Um, and the idea of the Deep Dark is that it's a cavern similar to the Nether, where you have bedrock above, bedrock below. Um, when you spawn in the Deep Dark, you are up in a layer of stone and cobblestone. As you can see, it's a mix of stone and cobblestone. And way down below us, there's a deep open cavern and it's just flat and it's dark <laughs> it's very dark and the dark in the deep dark is dangerous the dark will actually can actually cause um, damage to you so just standing in the dark for too long you're just gonna 
you're going to start taking damage just for no apparent reason, just because it's dark. So as we're down here, we want to be placing torches. Now there's nothing up here in the stone layer except, as we can see, lots of stone and cobblestone. All the meat resources are down below, and there are lots of them. There are usually at least double the resources down there. So for instance, if we look at diamond ore, we can see that this is this, the distribution in the overworld, and it's a max of 0.18%. In the deep dark, it's a max of 0.33%. Everything that spawns in the overworld also will spawn in the deep dark, but it just spawns in much greater quantities here. So I'm going to set this builder up. So now normally when I set up the builder, Bob the Builder, hooray, we would take our shape card. Actually, let's give this guy some power right away. We can set this guy down, and I'm just going to say out on all sides because whatever, and then it should start giving this guy some power. Now this thing has a buffer of 10 million so this is going to drain all of our power right away but that's fine because we're not actually using power for anything critical at the moment anyway so that's that's fine with me um so what we would normally do is we would shift right click on this guy to select i mean to uh, tell it that we want to give it coordinates um and then we're going to click on two coordinates so first we would like click on one coordinate that we want to start at and then we would that where we want it to start quarrying querying and then we click on the opposite corner which would be in this case down at bedrock um, on the other corner that we want to go to um, however obviously we're not going to we're not going to do that because we have no way of getting back up because <laughs> we have no teleportation we have no flight I mean, we could get down there i mean we we could we have our slime boots so we would bounce down there but we have no way of getting back up so um, i'm actually going to start with kind of a smaller space we'll just go right here so I'm let's see I click that one I'm just gonna click this one and put a torch there so that nothing spawns up here mobs that spawn in the deep dark are twice as strong as they are in the overworld they have twice as many hearts uh, and they spawn everywhere because it's dark <laughs> so in fact I don't know if this is still the case but it used to be the case that um, they could also spawn where there's light but very rarely so this so now we've set the coordinates based on where the builder block is these coordinates in here are offset from the builder block so this is telling us the dimensions so we're we're looking at 17 by 1 by 17 so because i clicked on the same y y level it's just just going to quarry out a 17 by 17 area um, which obviously isn't terribly useful because we want to quarry out way more than that and then this is the offset to the center. So minus 11, 1, minus 7 from the quarry, or from the uh, builder block. So minus 11 in the x direction, minus 1 in the y direction, so down 1. Minus, let's see, which is, yeah, this is minus in the x direction, and then this is minus in the y direction. So we're going minus 7 in the y direction. So that point that it's giving us is like somewhere in the middle of this block, this area here. Um, so what we're going to have to do if we want this thing to go all the way down to bedrock is first of all we're going to have to look we are at y178. So uh, we want the height of this thing to be 178. So we want our y to be not 1 but 178 and then we have to set the offset to not minus 1 but minus half of 178. And so 178 divided by 2 is 89 so we want to go down 89 and that's where the center of this is going to be um, Now this is going to put a great big hole here, which is going to be a little bit dangerous <laughs> But I think we can handle it and then we can go in here and we can actually click this button to have it give us a preview Although since there are blocks in the way, we're not gonna be able to see the preview um, but if We do that we can see actually let's I just want to see how far back did I bring this Okay, so that's where it's going to start. In fact, if we cut out that corner, we'll see that it's not doing that corner. And then I'm going to do the same thing back here, just to make sure that we got our dimensions. Obviously, we're not going to be able to check the bottom dimensions, but um, we'll, we'll be able to tell when it's done, <laughs> basically. So we'll have to wait until it's done. Well, actually, it does it one chunk at a time, so we'll know sooner than that. There, okay. You know what? I kind of want it to do this. Now, oh, whatever. We'll just 
I'm just going to manually break out this area. There, I cleared that whole area out. I put a bunch of these light uh, with the illumination wand from Not Enough Wands. I put these up here so that when we do have a big hole here, if we ever go down there, which we probably will at some point maybe, um, we'll be able to see easily where our way back. There's two more things for my RF tools I want to make um, in order to make our quarry run a little bit more smoothly. One of them is the RF monitor. That's this guy right here. What do we need for that? There we go. So that's an RF monitor, which basically outputs a redstone signal um, based on the contents of a nearby energy source or energy storage. That we'll be able to use to turn the quarry on and off based on how much energy we have in our energy cell network, which is right now showing only... Oh, because we're not chunk loading in the deep dark. I'll have to do that. And then the other thing is storage. So I want to start getting into RF tools storage which is pretty powerful and relatively inexpensive. So we have these modular storage things, which allow us to store items on disks, similar to an AE system or a refined storage system, which we'll be playing with later in this series. So we make the modular storage, and then we have to make the disks. So there's two different types of disks. There's just regular storage modules, which basically just store the items on the disk. And then there's also remote storage modules, which allow us to store items remotely on a disk somewhere else. Um, we're not going to get into that quite yet. Iron quartz, you know what, let's just grab a stack of quartz and throw it in there. So there's tier one. This stores 100 stacks of items for that price. So it's actually, you're, you're getting a lot for your money here. And there's tier two, which stores 200 stacks of items. And it uses the tier one module and then the tier three, which stores 300 stacks of items. This one's quite a bit more expensive, as you can see. I guess we're going to start with the tier two for now because we don't have enough gold to make tier three. So that's going to be enough. So we'll have to go out there and pick up our stuff because we're not doing remote storage quite yet because we're going to need a lot of ender pearls for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up this RF monitor pointing toward the builder block. So... That is that little arrow right there needs to be pointing toward the builder block. So we can take our smart wrench, what I, which I put inside my morph, morph to, morphing tool and rotate this until that thing is over there and this thing is over there. Okay, there we go. And then when we right click on it, we can say, look at the power in the power cell, which is right here. And I'll put a redstone signal when the power is more than let's say 50%. So that means this thing will only run when this power cell is at least 50% full. Um, I'm actually going to put a little override on the side here, uh, just because it's going to take a really long time before this reaches 50%, and I just want to run it a little bit for now, um, because it has to fill up this buffer of 10 million. And actually, we should chunk load this. I'm just using FTB utilities right now to claim chunks, or to load chunks. Oh boy, we're like right on a chunk boundary here. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. We only need to load this chunk because the builder block, by default, loads the chunk that it is currently mining or doing work in, which is really nice because it does work one chunk at a time. In fact, it might just do this part of this chunk first, so we'll be able to see it go all the way down to bedrock right here, or it might do one of the other chunks first. We don't know um, which chunk it's going to do first. But it's going to load just the chunk, so we don't have to load all these chunks and have all these chunks loaded all the time. Then we put our storage on top, so we can put our modular storage right there, storing the stuff, and then put our storage module in there. So now we can put stuff in here, and we're storing the stuff on that little disk. So if we take this disk off, that's thing that we put in there is now on this disk. You can see that the contents are one out of 200 stacks. We can store 200 stacks in there. And now we've taken that out, and we can see that it's storing zero out of 200 stacks. Um, one thing that we're going to want to do, though, before we start this thing, is we're going to want to void stuff. So we can void... Uh, I might not vo void gravel and sand, but that... And then we can ore dict. So that means stone, and anything ore dicted with stone, which would include granite and and a site and all that kind of crap so so it's going to avoid all that stuff so we don't have to worry about filling up our chest so really the only thing we're going to end up with in here is like ores and such so we give this guy a redstone signal it's going to eat through this power very quickly but it's also going to break blocks very quickly as we'll see there we go so it's starting on that chunk so pretty soon we're going to see 
the hole. We're gonna see the cavern. <laughs> it's so fast. Especially cobblestone. It's gonna go through cobblestone very quickly and stone. Wow. It's a really far long way down to the cavern. Okay, now it's going really slow, which means that it ran out of power. So, <laughs> so it's basically just using all the power that we're giving it right now. So 80 RF per tick. This is the speed. We could turn these junk boundaries off. This is the speed it goes at 80 RF per tick. Well, I doubled my power. <laughs> I added another uh, generator at home. So now we're going twice as fast. Oh boy, we're finally getting a glimpse into the cavern. Uh, of course, it's very dark, so we can't see <laughs> much. So it shouldn't be long now before we actually start getting some like stuff from our quarry. So there's a bug with the FTB utilities right now that the chunk loading only works in the overworld. Good thing I have chicken chunks installed. Hooray, there we go. It's mining now. Very nice. Let's see if we're getting any goodies yet. Yep, <laughs> look at that. Copper, bunch of that, bunch of that. Nice. And we can change the way these look too. Um, we can have it show in two columns, and then sometimes it'll cut off some of the names, or we can have it show like a regular chest. Hey, return to sender! <laughs> so I'm in the nether getting, trying to find some blaze rods. I haven't found a single fortress yet, and I've gone quite a distance. Yay, I found a fortress. There are so many. <laughs> There's so many. I got quite a few blaze rods already, though. But I really want to get that spawner with my uh, moving wand. Ooh. Ooh, another one. Nice! Ow! Ow! Fire! <laughs> There's so many! Oh, there's more now! Oh my god! Someone's shooting at me from over there too. Okay, wait, let's let's try this now. Ah! It worked! It worked! Hooray! Now how the heck am I gonna get out of here? <laughs> okay. <Whew. laughs> oh thanks, not enough ones. Oh my gosh. Ow! Nice, I just got a drop of evil <laughs> from a wither skeleton. I made it, that was a rough trip. That was really far. It was, let's see, I'm here, the fortress was way the heck over there, but it's huge, look at that. It was a pretty good haul. <laughs> Molten core, blaze rods, gas tears, magma creams, a drop of evil, some gunpowder, yeah, well. <laughs> well, I can't say for certain, because <laughs> I can't see that far. But I think we went, I think we made it down to bedrock in this chunk. And now it's working on that chunk, as you can see. Nice. And I made it so that there's three, so that I have a walkway all the way around, three blocks wide. So that I'll always be able to keep an eye on what's going on. Let's see what we got. We got diamonds. We must have made it down to, to bedrock we, with all that redstone and diamonds. And Yay. Nice. I'm actually going to shut this off for now. What do we have for gold? That was the main thing that started this whole thing. Not a whole lot, but whatever. We got a lot of clay. We're probably going to want to end up voiding avoiding some of that but the nice thing about these things now we can just grab this storage module and throw it in another modular storage or we could just pick up this modular storage which is what I'm going to do and bring it home now we can set down this modular storage that we got from the quarry and everything's in there nice and I just happen to have a void drawer for clay <laughs> so it'll fill that up oh wow so we finally have this thing filled up our one our 10 million RF is filled so we can now let this thing run automatically. Now this isn't going to be a perfect um, throttle here because it's going to... I have it, I turned it up to 80%. So the quarry is going to run only when we have 80% of our power in here, which would be 16 million RF because it's 20,000 million. I mean, it's because it's 20 million. Um, so what's going to happen is this thing's going to be using RF quick, more quickly than it's going to be able to draw it from here because it can only draw it at 5,000 RF per tick. 
And oh, and by the way, you can see where it says output cost 2.4%. We are losing 2.4 of our RF um, due to the linking. The farther away that you link, the more RF you'll lose. So there is there is a lossiness to it. There is a bit of a cost, um, but it's not it's not terribly much. So by the time this thing gets down to about 80%, much of this buffer will have been used already. In fact, maybe too much. Let's uh, let's do that even more. Let's try 95, just just to make sure, that, just to see how this works. And as soon as I place this up here, it's going to start quarrying. You can see it's pulling a lot of power. Oh, oh, okay. Okay, so that's actually working pretty well. We can probably bring that down to about 90. Let's try that. I just want to make sure that this buffer doesn't get too low. Because you can see it took a lot more than 80%. I mean, a lot more than 90% out of this because, like I said, it's pulling from here faster. I mean, it's using RF faster than it, can, than it could pull it. And we can only monitor this. I mean, I guess theoretically we could monitor this, but that wouldn't be helpful. Normally what I would do, a more sophisticated setup, would be to have it so that the RF monitor shuts off the input of RF into the machine. Um, we don't really have a way to do that yet. We don't have Ender IO conduits. That would be the easy way to do it. Ran into a little problem with the RF tool spawner, so we're going to have to save that for another episode, and I am out of time today. Um, so the spawning and the teleportation stuff we'll have to do in another episode uh, because I need Ender Pearls, and I haven't secured Ender Pearls yet. In the next episode, we're probably going to get started with forestry and make the forestry tree farm so that we can secure one of our last kind of basic resources and that being wood and charcoal and we may do we may set up some charcoal automation as well after that we may be crossing the river over there and building ourselves a little base <laughs> or a, maybe perhaps even a large base where we're gonna have a nice view of our little orchard over here so this will be kind of our living space and that'll be like our farm or whatever our garden and such and I'm also planning on doing XNet in the very near future. We may even set up kind of a, a sorting system with XNet. So to sort our stuff coming in from the quarry and from the tree farm and all that kind of stuff. And we're going to kind of use XNet um, to do a lot of things that we might have otherwise done with Ender IO. And I think it's going to work really well for that purpose. So I do hope you join me for that. If you do have any questions at all about RF tools or what we did today or what we didn't do today or whatever, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I do read all my comments. And of course, if you did like this, please don't forget to click the like button. And to join me next time, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.